I'm ready. Got the bags on. Look at this. Oh, it's got so much room for beer. Ray, roll. Let's do this thing. After driving for a million hours on Friday night, now it's two and a half, I made it to Mayerhoff's house. So I'm going to sleep for just a little bit and then uh, I'll fill you in tomorrow morning on uh, what all's going on. So it should be a pretty exciting trip. And all of the March Madness games. Detroit. So we found a, uh, Lebanese. what is it, Lebanese, Lebanese restaurant to eat at. It's, uh, it's uh, Remus, Remus, suggested by our Airbnb host. I was starving to death. Felt like I was dying after riding the train. We're in a very uh, culturally diverse area of Detroit. Mira says hello. What's up? Should be interesting. So it is uh, Sunday, the 30th, and last night we walked to Whiskey in a Jar, and we ended up starting a fire in the uh, fire pit that they had, and then the <laughs> locals got mad and yelled at us, uh, which was uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> So he uh, left, left there, came back. That's probably a good decision. It was a little late in the evening. So today we're going to bike from Hamtramck, Detroit, to uh, Ann Arbor and past Ann Arbor to Chelsea or something like that, around that area. So we'll see how it goes. It's like 60 some miles, 68 miles today is one of the longer days. We'll see how it goes. Part of the movie No Sudden Move was filmed in the hostel that we stayed at, which was kind of cool. This was our hostel. Pretty cool place. Hitting the road.
In a quarter mile, turn left. We ate lunch at a place called Sal's Pizza, and the breadsticks were really good, and the pizza was okay, but uh, the guy working was awesome. He was very excited to see us, and he may have let us put our own pizza in the oven, and which reminded me of the old college days, and we got free dessert, which was pretty awesome. I just got chased by the world's most vicious Cocker Spaniel puppy. <laughs> he pulled the leash out of his little kid's hand, was running down the road after us. So I stopped so the little boy could catch the dog. That was really funny. We somehow missed the turn to the bike trail, and so we had to take our bikes down this giant grass hill, which these pictures do no justice for. Even Livonia. It's not very quiet. Metro 275 trail rail. Chelsea Coliseum at the uh, Arctic Bar and Grill, Arctic Coliseum in Chelsea. Well, we are in Chelsea, and uh, good news. Still do not have COVID. So, 
We uh, camped at this little park and uh, I'm gonna fix some oatmeal here real quick. Warm up a little coffee maybe. Call it good. And we're biking on towards Battle Creek, I think. That was the plan. We'll see if that's still the plan. We didn't have a place to camp in Chelsea that night, so at the suggestion of the bartender at the Hockey Coliseum, we sneak camped at an undisclosed location. There's a parade, so there's a bunch of people sitting in town and everything. Yep, it looks like there it is. Maybe we should hop off the road. Yep, there is a parade. I got the whole parade on video. What? I got the whole thing. Right as we biked into it, I turned the video on. Whole town's in the parade. What town is this? Grass Lake. Jared's gonna go get in the end of the parade. That's the most ridiculous thing that's ever happened. We just biked into the Grass Lakes Michigan Memorial Day Parade. People were clapping for us. That was awesome. There was no signs or anything. It was just, boom, the band. We were in the parade. We had a terrible time finding anything that was open in Jackson, but we finally found this place called the Brass Rail that was really close to the bike trail that we were supposed to be getting on. 
we get, there was one lady working in the front and one guy in the back and we got some cheap burgers and fries and a couple drinks and they got slammed they were so busy but she was awesome and it was a neat little place and i'm glad we stopped rabbit crossing sign. This bike trail outside of Jackson was awesome, but it didn't last very long and then we were back on the highway. It's coming out of Concord. Got to get off the trail and take a little road action up to Albion. So on behalf of um, Wear the Blue and in honor of his service on this Memorial Day, I am going to run a mile for James Terrence Feeney, uh, Sergeant Feeney, who died February 2nd, 1969 in combat uh, in Vietnam. So um, we are on a cross Michigan bike tour right now and uh, biked about 65 miles yesterday and we're about mile 50 today. We are currently in Albion, uh, Michigan and I'm gonna run my mile on the Albion River Trail here. So, thank you. where I did my run. Found the only hill in Michigan. So we're biking into Marshall, Michigan. And uh, it's real pretty on this road. It's like North Highway B or something like that. It's just real cool. Tall canopy of trees. The road's real nice right now. It was a junk earlier coming out of Albion, but turned out pretty good. 
Might as well have a t-shirt on that said beautiful and hard. That's what I imagined Michigan would look like. She took away your breath like smoke. All you know right now is what Real pretty through here. We uh, stopped at the Copper Athletic Club, one of the few places that was open. And uh, well, Jared and I did not uh, were not impressed by the tacos. So the chicken tacos were better, but than the beef taco. But uh, yeah, I'd, if there's other places, I would I would suggest looking into other places. This is literally the only place that was open in town. So we're gonna try and bike in towards Battle Creek and see if we can find a stay for the night so it's about 13 miles we've got about an hour and we've got uh 40 some minutes of daylight 30 some minutes Let's see what happens this is a pretty town though except the traffic along the michigan avenue the shower nice and private just behind a garage with a house this is what gardens in Michigan look like Watermelon, strawberries, tomatoes, peppers, pole beans, green beans, and recreational marijuana. So it's uh, Tuesday, June 1st, but uh, a little bit of a late start. It's like almost 9.45, but we stayed at this awesome house last night after pulling into the church parking lot over here and trying to figure out where we were going to stay and then they heard us and came over and talked to us for a little bit and asked us if we we asked they asked if we just wanted to camp in their yard so it's pretty good deal hose showers and but uh had a good time last night and uh, biking into south haven today it's like 60 miles or something like that so i'm not really sure Guys are already up here at the gas station, and uh, I'm a little bit behind him. On the trail here in Battle Creek. Kellogg Foundation, something like that. Dames rocket. It's a trail outside of Battle Creek. On our way to Kalamazoo. Hey, I think we're gonna get on the highway here shortly. Death is near. Death is near. Turn back. Turn back. If we die, it was on the trail and Augusta? Something like that? I think that's where we are. 
You're so brave. So brave. Good luck. Kalamazoo River Valley Trail. Taking this into Kalamazoo. Then we're gonna get on the Cal Haven Trail. Trees are so tall here. So we're in Kalamazoo. Just ate at Burdocks. It was too fancy for us. A little pricey, but it was really good. So once again, everything was closed. Now we're trying to go to the trailhead so we can get on the Calhaven Trail. Headed out of Kalamazoo to hook up with the Calhaven Trail. Just completely covered the trees. There's a chipmunk. This is really cool. So we stopped at Larry's Pub. That was a good place to stop. Good idea. It's hard to, we missed it actually. We biked past it and come back, but definitely worth it. They had uh, $6 burgers and fries and a beer. So it's a good deal. We just stopped in Bloomingdale for a little bit. It's a nice little town. Sunset.
to be back in a second. Wednesday morning and uh, last night we met you good did you find somewhere to eat Six chicks in the kitchen. There's just several perfect so So, sorry about that, kind of spaced off there in that video, but uh, it's kind of a rough morning for me. But anyway, we had biked into South Haven and we went to that bar and there was no one there. And then they sent us to another bar. Uh, it was more of a towny bar just up the road. And there was a bunch of people in there. And after kind of ponying up to the bar and making friends with the locals, uh, we eventually, somebody said we could camp in their backyard. And so that's where we were. Uh, in that video, we were just uh, leaving their backyard, so it was a it was a pretty rough, <laughs> pretty rough morning for me that morning. So definitely trailed off a little bit there. So we had breakfast at Six Chicks. So it was good. Couldn't really eat very much personally, but the waitress is real friendly and lots of local people. It was real nice, nice little place. Not quite feeling alive yet this morning. Lots of honking in this town. That was awesome. I found a little no farmer's way. market. Got some homemade cheese curds and some blueberry jelly. Thought that'd be the most stereotypical Michigan thing I could get. So I talked to a bunch of people too. That's cool. It's a neat, neat little place. down here. That local guy I was talking to up there said like 40% of this town is second houses, he called them. Like vacation houses. There they all are, right there. Look at all those little fish. 
That is not no, it's very cold. Kind of feels good on my feet, though. Just, uh, ooh, there's some of my beard. It's probably cotton hole seed. I see it, some cheese curds. Got a farmer's market. Brewing Company. So we just kind of had a late lunch at uh, St. Joseph, <laughs> Michigan, at the Silver Pizza. It was delicious. So good. A neat little place too. Open here on the bottom. But, uh, you have to clean their face a lot. Every night. I'm at this bowl though. Every night. Bad part about these Silver Beach Pizza place is this very steep ramp.
St. Joseph, Michigan. These houses around here are awesome. It's really cool. And there's a I'm not sure if we're still in St. Joseph or how that works, but these houses are so cool. Tiny houses. stopped for a second. Eight miles from New Buffalo. Snack time. Ready? Ta About eight miles out from New Buffalo. This road's really pretty. So we stumbled onto a uh, fundraiser for a gay youth outreach organization. And they have a band, it's a uh, Bowie cover band called Stardust. And uh, it's awesome. It's everything you would ever dream of. And they have uh, offered us a uh, sausage. The chef came over and talked to us. So, it's very, very cool. Okay, that's like split, right? We'll just take each one, take one over and share with them. Look at that thing. Big wiener. Look at that thing. Oh my goodness. Big wiener. Incredible. This is awesome. Or, because they did say earlier, 
here. Why is nobody up front? Yeah. It might not fit like stand. Couple deer hanging out in that guy's yard. We didn't think they were alive when we first saw them. They weren't moving. They were just staring at each other. I do not have any shoes on, so that is no cheese on my foot.
funny that I was going to see Bill. So it is Thursday, the 3rd, I think, about 6 o'clock in the morning, and I slept in the back. <clears throat> Jared's truck. At? And we were at yesterday. <laughs> oh. I'm not ready to be awake yet. We were invited to sleep on the a private part of the beach, but we didn't really want sand all over everything, so we decided to just sleep in the truck instead. So <clears throat> we stayed at Jackie's Cafe. So we were gonna eat it like Rosie's or something, and it wasn't open. Seems to be a recurring problem on the strip. So uh, had the crepe, and it was it was all right. Not a big uh, sautéed spinach person, but it's different. So that was good. Now we're on the road. So I thought I'd show you how I had my stuff packed real quick. So these are my two front panniers. They are the Ortlieb gravel panniers is what they're called. They worked really well. This one had like my clothes and stuff in it and headlamp, dirty stuff's on the bottom, clean stuff's in bags. And then this one was the right side one and it had my stove little Coleman cook set and stuff in it um, and then this is my sleeping bag I just put it in a dry bag so then I don't have to worry about it getting wet or anything that was strapped behind my bike here's a tent I borrowed from a friend and Meerhoff and I both slept in that it's definitely tight for two people air pad which went in one of the panniers this is a pillow, the one in one of the panniers, it actually started leaking, and so I just kept it inside this dry bag, and it worked just fine, just like that. Um, and this is the back bag. This is a MT Top Peak. That's what it is. It clips on to my rack. So on one side, I had food, and I put my sunscreen in there. I did not bring enough with the start. On the other side, uh, I have my jacket and like toothbrush and just anything like that that I would need to just, a hat that I would just daily need to slap on. And then in the middle, under Detroit, the Fox and the Driftwood, I pulled out of the lake. Uh, this piece unzips and there's usually beverages in there and food and stuff that's easily accessible. So I tried to put the accessible stuff in this one so and these panniers fold up and stuff but that was kind of my setup i thought i'd show you that real quick this is our fanny packs or if i don't have pockets or anything so in case you were wondering <laughs> 